Zero Odyssey check-in. We are here at the Rockstar Suite at the Hard Rock Hotel in New York. I am Mike Adam. This is Dua Lipa. We hi, have hi, hi. so much to celebrate. <laughs> um, the new album, I, the, the image on the cover just like pulls you in. I feel like it's so open to interpret in different ways. Did you mean to do that? Yeah. I mean, for me, um, we, we shot all the images for the for the album on film. And so I was waiting a little while for them all to get developed and to kind of see what was gonna come out. And I remember when I saw this picture, it immediately said radical optimism to me because in my head, it's so much about moving gracefully through the chaos, you know, having that kind of flair of optimism when things aren't going right. And so the idea that I'm remaining really calm and graceful while there's a shark nearby. Right, right, right. And like that, nothing screams radical optimism to me more than that. Yeah. And so that just felt very fitting for the album cover to also encapsulate the, the you know, the meaning of the songs. You know, the, the cover suggests that you're somewhat of a, a risk taker like w would you ever do anything like that g go in a shark cage I'd, I'd give it a go yeah yeah have you done what's the craziest thing Dua's done uh not that <laughs> and actually nothing that crazy um yeah nothing nothing to that extent but I'd do it yeah I'd give it a go I feel like yeah if I'm in a in a cage next to some sharks yeah why not why not why not um, I love your outlet, Service 95. Um, I feel like what we, we don't necessarily see from Dua through the music, we see through the platform. Mm. Like just the things you, the stories you curate on there, it really says a lot about you as a person, which I love. Um, I know that's your baby. How do you kind of plan on expanding on that uh, as the years go on? Um, well, I guess as it stands and something that I want to continue doing is definitely still keeping the, the newsletter and um, commissioning stories from all around the world. I would love, you know, uh, to, to maybe go deeper into like production, whether that's film or TV. I just uh, co-produced a documentary about Camden in London, which is going to come out at the end of May on Disney Plus so that was kind of like my first taste of getting into something like that yeah. and I enjoyed the behind the scenes so much that I think you know I, I'd like to do more of that and I feel like Service 95 really ties me into all of that um, and you know my book club it's the same you know maybe a publishing and print maybe something like that for other authors um, yeah we'll see I, I have big dreams for it yeah so you are like a good interviewer. I, was you that, think so? Yes. <laughs> was that always a hidden talent? Did you no. work at that? What? No, it, it, it's, it's just kind of, I think, allowing yourself to be vulnerable in the moment. Also just um, an open, I guess, m makes you good at it. You yeah. know, for me, it was just important that at no point did any of my guests feel like they were about to get caught out or whatever. And it's right, just right, like right. asking them questions that really are of service. And uh, yeah, I guess maybe a, a bit of a hidden talent, but it's hard work that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, do, doing what you do. There's so much research and time that goes into it with every single guest. And um, yeah, I, I respect it a lot. It's a, it's a real craft. Do you have like a, a favorite question or a, a curveball question that you always keep in your back pocket for people? Not necessarily. I think every single one kind of, I love, like I have my set questions, but I love going off piste, mm -hmm. like naturally, depending on where the conversation goes, whether it's like leading into like transcendental meditation and how that kind of helped somebody in their mental health journey or you know, whatever it is, I think when those off piece questions come along, yeah, that's when I know I'm really in it because it's like it's it's a real conversation rather than just, you know, question and answer kind of thing. So it, it changes. It changes all the time. Has anybody you've ever uh, prepared an interview for? Like, have you ever gotten nervous leading up to? To be honest, I get nervous before all of them because it's it's so out of my comfort zone to interview someone you know, to be on the other side of, of the interview. So I get nervous every time and I want to do a good job. And it's quite interesting when somehow it ends up me being interviewed or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I remember doing a conversation with like Esther Perel and she kept like asking me questions back. And 
I was like, whoa, this is like a, a new, a new um, experience as well, which I, I enjoyed. So recently it was, it was so sweet of your father. He uh, took you on as a client. <laughs> yeah, very kind of him. Very kind of him, right? <laughs> so he's, he's managing you now. Has that changed the dynamic of your relationship with him? No, not at all. I mean, we've always had such a clear, like, we've had hangout time where we could just be boys, basically. Yeah. And then we had work time. And that was always there before he was my manager. So he'd always be my soundboard and someone who I'd I'd go for advice. And so now it's, it's perfect because we just get even more time together. But we make sure that not everything's about work. Sure. There, there has to be one thing you've disagreed on career-wise up to this point. Has there been anything big where you had to put your foot down? You're like, no, I think this is best for me? Um, gosh, I don't know, because we're just so open in, um, in conversation. I mean, of course, there'll be stuff where, I think I've just learned to have boundaries in a way that maybe I hadn't done before. It's like um, the only person who will know you know, how much something takes out of me as me. And so I will have all these things presented to me and I'll go, actually, I just don't think I can hack that right yeah, now. Yeah. And I don't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, I get a lot of empathy and he's like, it's okay. Like if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. Yeah. Kind of thing. I love so it. Before we wrap, um, you and I both Albanian, yes. um, our people are very, proud of their heritage for sure. For sure. Um, do you ever feel that weight of like needing, wanting to do right by the community? Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily feel a pressure. It's something that comes, I guess, easily to me uh, in that sense. I, because I lived in Kosovo. I go there every year. We do a festival. All those things are just, um, just such a big part of my life. It's, it, I guess, yeah, in a way, it's a community that gave me so much, but I don't see it as a pressure. It's more just a very natural flow. I love it. Yeah, Sonny Hill looks crazy this year, you by the way. Come but by. Yeah, I know, I know. Your dad's been, I, he's you been got, on okay, me, for sure. come by, for see sure. us. We'll set it up. <laughs> Listen, uh, thank you so, so much. Congratulations on thank everything. You. It I is so good to see it. you. Thank you. So good to see you, too.